Let's quickly recap what we saw in the previous video. A complex number A plus BI can be plotted in two ways. First, A units to the right and B units up. Assume that this length OP is R units and this angle from the positive x-axis is theta. So the second way to represent point P is R comma theta. If we are looking at this right triangle, this length is A, this length is B, this length is R. Angle POA is theta and this angle is 90 degrees. Now let's just focus on this triangle and nothing else. Let me ask you a simple question. Can you tell me the length of R in terms of A and B? Come on, you should be able to answer this. As this is a right triangle, we can use the Pythagoras theorem to find R. R squared will equal A squared plus B squared. The square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Taking the square root on both sides, we get the value of R as root of A squared plus B squared. This is nothing but the modulus of the complex number Z. We had covered this in one of our videos. If the complex number Z is equal to A plus BI, then the modulus of this complex number Z is the square root of A squared plus B squared. It's also known as the absolute value of the complex number. What is theta then? It's called the argument of Z, which can also be written like this. Now that we know how to represent R in terms of A and B, can you try and derive theta in terms of A and B? Let me give you a hint. Use trigonometry identities in this triangle. Do you remember the code we used for the three basic functions in trigonometry? Yes, it's so ka tua. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. So sine theta can be written as b over r. We get the value of b as r sine theta. Cos theta can be written as a over r, which tells us that a is r cos theta. Now we have a and b in terms of r and theta. But we still don't have theta in terms of a and b. But are these two enough to give us that? Yes, all we need to do is divide b by a. r gets cancelled and we get b over a as sine theta over cos theta. And what's sine over cos? It's tan. Tan theta will equal b over a. Hence theta will equal tan inverse of b over a. That's theta in terms of a and b. With this, we have successfully represented r and theta in terms of a and b. So if we have the real and imaginary part of the complex number, we can represent it in the polar form as well. In the process of doing this, We've also derived a couple of other relations. A is R cos theta and B is R sin theta. So the complex number A plus BI can also be written as R cos theta plus R sin theta times I. As R is common to both the terms, we can write it as R times cos theta plus I sin theta. This is the polar form of the complex number. R is the modulus of Z and theta is the argument of z. So if we are given a and b, we can get the polar coordinates r and theta. And if we are given the polar coordinates, we can get the values of real and imaginary parts. Why do we need the polar form? We often use this concept in locating a point. We specify direction along with the distance from a central point. For instance, while marking places on a map, we say that a particular city is 200 kilometers northeast. So R is 200 and theta is 45 degrees. I also want to show you a beautiful way to have a polar representation graph. This is how you can imagine it. This is a one unit radius circle. This is a two units radius circle and so on. And these are angles marked at intervals of 15 degrees. So if R is three units, and theta is 45 degrees, the point will lie here. If R is 2 units and theta is 135 degrees, the point will lie here. 
If R is 4 units and theta is 315 degrees, the point will lie here. You may not see this diagram in the textbooks, but it's a really good way to understand the polar representation. The next video will cover examples of expressing complex numbers using the polar representation.